Shamel Lane and this week courtesy of Studio Calico I'm here with a little bit of fun with the November kit. That's sock hop and all the add-ons that go along with it. So there'll be a new video every day this week and I hope you can stop by and scrap along with me or just get some ideas to use the Studio Calico kits or your own stash. And today I'm starting with the main kit. The main kit this month is called Sock Hop and it includes everything you see here. So um, some cardstock in gray, white, craft and turquoise and then lots of pattern paper, plenty of embellishment. There's um, green arrow print washi tape, two different alphabets, a chipboard alphabet in navy blue from basic gray and a red alphabet from Jenny Bolin. There are border strips that are a bit transparent from basic gray wood veneer feathers from Studio Calico, some different die cuts and badges, fancy Echo Park brads, and this month's stamp set which has um, four little chevron arrow pieces and the um, true story stamp in joined up variety. Then all of these pattern papers and one sheet of vellum. And the vellum is a gray feather print and then I'll show you the other sides of these papers. So you get these, and then on the other side, you have these options to choose from. So there's quite a bit of color variety available in this kit. There's several. Um, there are several craft colored neutral tones. There's a bit of red, there's a bit of blue, there's a bit of yellow, there's a bit of green, and there's a bit of pink. So there's quite a few different options for um, mixing and matching just the main kit this month. And there's this lovely parquet wood grain, lovely blue floral, so plenty of different options and today I'm going to take you through a layout using just the main kit and then um, throughout the week I have some additional pages to share with you. So I hope you enjoy and uh, I'll get started on this page. To start this page I'm using the craft polka dot uh, paper which is the opposite of the red, uh, red chevron and I've cut a about half of the yellow starburst paper and I've cut it down to six inches by it must be uh, about a quarter of an inch shy of the 12 inches and then matted it with white cardstock and I'm just going to attach that to the top of the page and basically I was going with using this yellow starburst effect as a bit of a, um, a sunshine on the horizon it's certainly not meant to to be literal uh, not a, a big sunshine with clouds or anything like that but just that kind of idea this is what that paper once I cut it in half that's what the paper made me think about and I have um, two photos to go along with this and I'm going to mat them with the lighter side of this blue pattern paper and I'm just going to put them all on one block of paper so that they're right next to each other. And then I'll trim on two sides just to have a photo mat in that um, blue to contrast the yellow and the, ca and the craft in the background. Photos in place, next thing is my title in this case. And I want to use both alphabets um, the flat letters for the top word and the uh, chipboard letters for the bottom word. So it's easiest to get my placement of that bottom word first, but I want to overlap. Um, so I need to basically take one letter from the bottom, and these you can punch out with the, the piece at the bottom intact. So I can actually spell out my word without sticking it down because there's no the, the paper is still in the back so it's not uh, sticky yet. So I can spell this, well, if I punch the correct direction, I can spell this all out and then I can use that placement to be able to put these letters in the right place and get it so that the bottom line is still going to rest right on the bottom of the yellow cardstock but these will tuck just 
behind the very tops of those letters. And that's the effect that I want to go for. And I'm just starting everything lined up with that photo. I'm not overlapping on this particular title, but I also don't want a gap here in between. I want it to start straight away. So I'll just um, get that top word in place, and then I can add the, these letters so that they overlap just the tiniest bit. With the title in place, then I'm going to move up to the corner to start adding some embellishment. And I want to add a bit of a horizontal line so I have some sort of grounding for the pieces that I'm going to add. So I'm just using the washi tape and wrap that around to the other side. And then the die cuts, I'm just going to have some of the pieces flat on the page and then others lifted up with the pop with a pop dot or two and that way I can um, get a little bit of dimension in these little groups as well now I only have one of each of these die cuts so I can't repeat this anywhere else on the page. So I want to put some embellishments with this little grouping that I can repeat elsewhere. So I have multiples of these red seal stickers at the bottom of the alphabet. So I'm going to put one of those in here too. And then I have plenty of wood veneer feathers. So add those into the embellishments too. So I can spread all these out and see what different sizes will work best. And then I can just move these around until I find a mix that's going to work well. I think that might work well to have one either side. Oh, maybe not. It looks too much like wings, I think. <laughs> so I'll just add the one here, I think. And then I want to find a place where I can repeat some of these elements. So I'm going to come down to this bottom corner and just do a tiny little bit, little bit of embellishment that's going to overlap on top of this empty space in the photo here repeating that same process with the washi tape to get some horizontal grounding there and then the elements that I can repeat so the red seal sticker and the wood veneer feather And I'm going to stop at this point to add my journaling to the page so that I don't run out of room. So I have just a little bit of embellishment started and I want to get the words down so that this title makes sense and that the photos make sense and then I'll pick up with a bit more embellishment once that's on the page. My writing takes up the space from underneath my title to the bottom of the photo, but it does leave me a little bit of a gap at the end. So I'm going to repeat that same embellishment grouping using the washi tape first and then one of the red seal stickers and a little feather. And just wrap that around to the other side. Same thing with the red label. And I'm just looking for how closely I can get it to the letters without covering up the writing. And then a small feather to frame 
that circle. So that's given me three little spots of embellishment and I can come back and add a little bit more to that. And I'd like to draw a little bit more attention to the title since the title's relatively small in comparison to all the other elements. So for that I'm going to use the stamp set and some different colors of ink. I think I will go with this one with that has the, um, the broken lines here. And just go get my stamp block and then I think for ink I'm going to alternate blue, red, and green to make that little line there. So I have um, green, red, and blue ink and I want the green to be closest to the lettering so that I can then alternate green, red, blue. So I'll start with the green and then work up and I just have a spare piece of cardstock ready to stamp off the extra color. So then I want blue and then red above that. And I think I'll make it at least two, possibly three arrows wide. I'll just see how, how it goes. But because it's, it's a clear stamp, it's really, really easy to see through and line up like that. Let's just repeat that one more time here. And if I were decisive, I could go ahead and stamp all three greens there together, but I'm not decisive yet. I need to see the lines first and then decide if I want a third column. Okay, I think I'll be decisive now and <laughs> too late and uh, decide to do a third one. The more I look at this particular arrow in the stamp set, the more it reminds me of the Transformers logo, so for any of you who have Transformers fans, um, I think this would be a good stamp for that uh, particular theme. Strangely enough, but upside down, looking at it, it does remind me of the Transformers logo. There we go. So, a bit more color near the title that way. And for now, I'm going to leave it with just those three columns. I'm going to work on the embellishment a little bit, and I do have the, the potential to carry this out a little bit, but I think I'll leave it as these three pieces because if I were to carry this line out across, then I'm going to end up with a gap here that would be trapped between the stamps and the second word of the title. I just have this yellow strip and I'm not completely convinced that that would be a good idea. So for now I'm going to leave it with just that little block of nine stamps. It was really easy to line up and make that pattern so if you wanted to expand that over a larger part of the page or more colors or all in one color, definitely doable. Coming back to the embellishment, I have the empty space in the three red seals to fill and, and decorate in some way. And I've pulled out a punch that I haven't used in a little while. It's this leaf uh, punch with five leaves from Martha Stewart. And I'm just trying that in green from this grid paper in the kit. And from there, I can just tuck these under the feathers so slightly so that they create a little bit of a, a grouping that's angled and in reality if um, if you didn't want to stay completely true to this idea of scrapbooking only with the kit I would probably punch these from a scrap of green rather than punching right into this whole big sheet but 
I didn't want to break my rules, so um, I am punching into the sheet, and I'll just have to use um, that paper in a a smaller piece rather than the full 12 by 12. But it will all be okay, I'm sure. So just going to angle one leaf with each feather. And I just put the adhesive on a couple of the leaves and then bend the others up. It's quite small to put pop dots under. I'd have to cut the pop dots and that seems like a lot of effort. So for me, I will just I'm putting most of the adhesive at the bottom. This is the awkward one because the leaf goes the other way. Or the feather, I mean. But it can still And then I have a little bit of a gap up here that I'd quite like to repeat that same stamping. So I'm going to do that exactly the same way um, and just run it in this gap here. Then I'll come back and look at if I want anything in this corner or if I need something to join this kind of larger area of embellishment together. Now I need to have a look at my three areas of embellishment and see um, how I can finish them. And I've brought blue into this area of embellishment because I have the blue and the stamping and then the large blue die cut. And these only have the green and the red plus the wood veneer. So I feel like I need to add some blue into that. This one is a good spot to use the True Story stamp from the stamp set. So I'm just going to use the blue ink and line this up the bottom so that the Y fits in that gap made by the tape and the seal. So that brings a little bit of blue into this area, but I don't want to just repeat the same wording on the other side. And so I thought I'd have a look at the other blue elements in the kit, and that includes the chipboard letters. And they do have two little star shapes, the little asterisks. So I think one of these can can come into this little grouping down here. And then maybe the other one to, can come up to the larger area up here. Perhaps to, to join the stamping in with these other layers. And I think, just as a last finishing touch, I'm going to grab some brown Mr. Huey and just add a couple little drops to these three areas and then I will call this one done. So I'm using um, an older color pony, but there are um, there is a, a, a dark brown, at least one dark brown, in the current collection. But I still have plenty of this one, so I haven't bought a new color yet. And I just want a few little drops because I want to carry this line through so this little diagonal but obviously I won't put any on top of the photos but this can then just join all of this and let it read as um, as one cohesive piece Okay, so there's a little lesson for you. <laughs> it spreads on the die cut a lot more than it does on the normal pattern paper. Um, I may need to move my little asterisk to, to balance that out a little bit. It's not the end of the world by any means. So now I want to add a few down here. And you can use the eyedropper as well to get um, larger dots. And then I'll add just a tiny bit in this corner to give it that same continuity as the other pieces. And let's see if I can move this one very carefully, maybe, maybe stuck, we'll see. All right, and then that's a bit better balance. 
And I think I will stop before I add any more and, uh, and get a bit too much ink. So this is my page with just the main kit for November 2012. That's the sock hop kit from Studio Calico. And I have more to share with you throughout the week, including all the different add-on kits. So I hope you'll stop by again. Thanks for watching.